My name's Dave Brunt and I manage the Activity Lean Enterprise Academy and I'm joined by Gordon Pearson from CSL Securus, uh, Peter Watkins and David Marriott today. Um, just a reminder, LEA is a not-for-profit organisation um, set up by Dan Jones over 20 years ago to help customers become self-reliant on their lean journey. Uh, do take a look at the website. It explains our history, what we're researching, how we work with partner companies and uh, all of our learning, teaching and coaching and sharing activities. Um, the summit is, um, is our conference that we developed to help people learning and implementing lean thinking. Um, it's our key in-person activity uh, that helps delegates by sharing how lean can be used to solve the problems of today and tomorrow, whilst enabling participants to build their own network of lean thinkers. Uh, we have four key themes for the 2023 event. Um, firstly, the productivity challenge. Secondly, supply chain disruption. Uh, thirdly, the environmental crisis. And fourthly, lessons learned from COVID-19. The principle of Kaizen runs through uh, all, of those, um, all of those themes. Um, there are both keynote plenary sessions and also learning sessions which you can tailor to your agenda. There are over 30 speakers from 15 companies, including the Aramis Group, Iberia, Toyota, uh, Strategy Deployment, the NHS, Tales, Technip, FMC, Ecobat, and of course, CSL Seguiras. Um, we're told that it's the best event of its kind. It regularly um, attracts a diverse audience. Last event, uh, we held in 2018 and 160 representatives from 22 countries. Uh, with five weeks to go, this 2023 event has got 120 people in the room. Our capacity is 160, so we may actually sell out this this year. We'll uh, we, we'll we'll see how we uh, how we get on. Okay, so uh, before I hand over to Peter, just some quick housekeeping. Uh, we'd like to address any questions you have on today's subject. So please raise a question in the chat section of Teams. As a courtesy to everyone, press mute on your microphone until the QA sessions, and that way we can all stay focused. We won't get any background noise. Um, we're recording the session and we'll edit the content so that only the slides and the presentation are in the recording. And after today's session, uh, you'll get access to that recording. OK, so um, let's get started. Uh, Peter, over to you. OK, thanks, uh, David. So, uh, yeah, today's subject uh, is something close to my own heart as well. Uh, and I think it's you know, one of the key aspects of a lean journey. But uh, we uh, often ban the word around lean culture and, uh, you know, what does it actually really mean? Uh, so we like to describe it at LEA at least as highly engaged people continually solving problems to improve the flow of value. That's kind of how we describe a lean culture or the outcome of uh, lean culture. So it's great to be talking about that today, finally. And uh, we've been partnering with the CL CLS uh, Securus in Liverpool for a while now uh, and developing their lean culture by their leaders, uh, teaching and coaching others using some of our lean learning processes. So I'd kind of like to welcome Gordon, really, as the head of Ops, OPEX in Securus Liverpool. He's uh, with us today. And uh, really, just like uh, Gordon, if you can just uh, introduce yourself and just uh, maybe talk a little bit about who CLS Securus is. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. So my name's uh, Gordon Pearson. As as Peter said, I'm the head of operational excellence for CSL Securus at the uh, Liverpool site. And of uh, CSL Securus, we're part of the the wider CSL group. The CSL Securus bit is focused uh, primarily on the uh, manufacture of vaccines. At the Liverpool site, we're focused very much on seasonal influenza vaccine. Although we do also have an element of uh, pandemic readiness. That's our business at the Liverpool site. Okay. Great. OK, thanks, Gordon. So what uh, we want to talk about now is what we've worked on, really uh, um, partnered with you guys on. And uh, so I'll get into some of the questions uh, relating to that. Yeah. So why did you kind of start this uh, employee involvement uh, journey and what was your problem to solve? Mm. <clears throat> So effectively, Peter, we're starting, we're starting from a position of, uh, of strength, which is a great place to be. Securus is a, uh, CSL Securus is a very high performing company, but we, we wanted to get even better. And we identified the critical thing we wanted to do was to really develop the problem solving ability 
the capability of our team members at the Liverpool manufacturing site. Um, we recognise that the the offering of, from the LEA, the concept of doing this through the leaders was very much the way to do and the way to make it stick. We have very good engagement already on our site. We have a very clear purpose. We're primarily around the protecting lives, reducing uh, illness, reducing the impact on uh, on healthcare infrastructure. So that, that was good. But what we needed was we wanted a bit more clarity and a bit more focus on the capability development, both in our team members, but also in our leaders. And uh, we also found that using the Lean Transformation Framework to help us define our problem and how we wanted it to link was also really beneficial. And that's, that's something that both myself and my, uh, my colleagues on getting leaders directly from the business and people from my team as well, we'll talk through in more detail at the, uh, the conference in, I think it's six weeks now, isn't it? Yeah. So looking forward very much to sharing more detail in that space. Oh, great, good, great. Good. So, you know, is it, as you start any activity in any organisation, there's always some challenges, uh, you know, to to start off. So, what were the kind of challenges you had uh, with your people going forward? So, yeah, Peter, one particular challenge we had was the the process that we looked at initially in terms of our pilot area. Clearly, we wanted to have everybody involved in the process participating in this because to do it on one shift or one area and not the others would be hard because we wanted them to own the process going forward. And the recommendation normally is you do seven to ten people. In our particular situation, we had to do uh, close to 50 people and that made it really tough. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, that made it very hard to get that engagement as quickly as we would otherwise. Another major challenge we had, uh, of course, was we had the uh, the COVID pandemic right in the uh, the middle of when we were trying to start this, and that the key a key impact on uh, what we're trying to do as well. So I'd say they were they were the major challenges for sure. Okay, so so using the LTF as you said before, we kind of uh, developed a, a, a sort of blueprint to follow yeah, to start engaging team members. So you know when we developed that blueprint you know, along with yourselves, yeah, what were your concerns at the start of the, the process? So I th I thought the blueprint model was good. One of the the key concerns I had at the start was the the poster methodology for training when that was shared with me through. A team's meeting initially like this, I thought, wow, there's uh, there's a huge amount of detail on there. When I also saw them on LinkedIn, I definitely had concerns in that space. So that was uh, that was certainly a concern that I had. But I think that the real learning for me was the value of the posters. The value of any product is essentially that it serves the needs of the customer. And the reality for me was I'm not the customer of the poster. The customer of the poster are the leaders who are delivering the training and the people who are receiving it on the shop floor. So in the shop floor environment, it works extremely well. The posters are there. They're visible. People can talk them through in, in different you know, in different phases, so you can say you can have one approach for one group of people where you talk them through the whole poster and the logic, or you can just pick elements out. But certainly a huge value is it's constantly there as an a memoir if people want to check back in on a particular point. And just by walking past the posters regularly, it's triggering this, the ideas and imprinting in people's mind the importance of the correct behaviours to really generate the, uh, to help create the culture of continuous improvement that we really want to have. Okay, so when we were kind of uh, uh, looking at this this process that was situationally uh, applied for your organisation, how do you think the leaders started to take to it as we went through it? So I think it's it started relatively so, relatively slowly, but again, once they started doing it, they really started to see a real value in this. And I, I think by sharing the concept of uh, everybody learning together, leading with humility and saying, OK, let's just try it and see what we think, we really started to get it to stick. So we gave leaders effectively permission to to try and adjust and obviously fail and learn. And I think we've got some really great testimonials that have come out of this. We've got, um, for example, five videos that we've taken directly speaking to our leaders in the organisation where they share real life feedback from how well they found it, what they liked, what the challenges were and how they've actually used it to directly get success. And again, giving a, a bit of a plug to the conference, we'll share at least two videos, possibly more, 
of when we're actually going through the conference so you can get direct feedback from the leaders who have done it. And as I alluded to before, the, the leader who's accountable for the whole area, Dee Hamer, will be at the conference as well. So she will be giving direct feedback to the benefit that she saw as a business leader and also the learnings that she took from it. That was great. And she really embraced the process and uh, sort of really took control of it, which was great. Yeah. So so using this process, what, what kind of uh, surprised you about this learning process as you went through it? Well, I think that probably the biggest surprise for me, um, as I already alluded to, was just how successful the, the post uh, training methodology was. I mean, as I said, I was sceptical, but I mean, that's probably one of the standout things from the whole the whole process that you've got visible in the area, the key messages that we've uh, we've communicated and our leaders have communicated. There's not a single instance, effectively, of something being written on PowerPoint or put in a folder and then put in a drawer and nobody's quite sure where it is. Essentially, everything we talked about is visible to every individual in that team every day and that really promotes the uh, the culture that we want to take to okay great so so you know as this was not kind of you know it's not we rolling out training to everybody you know we had a problem to solve we're understanding what the work is and then we're developing people's capability to be able to to do that and improve the work yeah so at the end of the day we need to go back and say did we solve any of those problems so what was the kind of you know, evidence that you've seen that the the process we went through actually delivered some results. So yeah, we've we've certainly got multiple examples of of this coming out, and and again, the conference will talk through uh, some of those in detail. But just very simple ones in terms of uh, engagement and really making people's lives easier, so people really feel now that they're they're owning the process, they're owning the metrics, they're accountable for making things happen in terms of the parts of the process they can control. Clearly, they're parts of the process because we're a highly regulated environment that they don't have direct control over. But those bits that they can control really start to see good examples of improvement in that space. And yeah, we'll, we'll certainly talk about that in detail in the conference. Looking forward very much to that. Okay, great. So going through this process and, uh, you know, if, if uh, one of the audience members or the people coming to the summit now are going to do a similar thing, what would you advise them to, you know, as they're undertaking this to consider? So I think the the key messages for us and we as part of um, our process, we constantly capturing learnings on a regular basis. And we document this all on a, a visual we call call a snake because it's got visualized uh, a long and windy road, constantly reflecting on what was good, what was bad. I think a major call out for us is uh, engagement and communication right at the start of the process. Yeah. So I, I think the old uh, adage of you, it's impossible to over communicate is certainly true in terms of our immediate stakeholders, but also wider stakeholders. So yeah. people in supporting functions, I think we definitely a, a learning point is we could engage them better for sure. And I think understanding the required speed, you know, in terms of how quickly you want to get the initial benefits from the blueprint is also a big factor. I think our initial timescale piece was probably over optimistic because it does okay. take a while to get this level of engagement, yeah. particularly with the size of uh, people that we're talking about. And obviously a key point that we're learning now effectively at Liverpool, we're now at phase three of this. And to, to go back to the question about is it positively affecting the business, this is now being piloted at our other two CSL Securus manufacturing sites, one in America, one in Australia. So that's a very positive endorsement. I think that the number one message is it's all about situational awareness, exactly how you apply the process should depend on the situation. So I think that for me, that's really is the key takeaway. Uh, and also now I know you know you you're taking those processes uh, you know situationally adjusting them and then rolling them out to kind of the other leaders now in the other areas so they can uh, act that with their people. So how are you finding that and what what are you learning as you're doing that? Yeah, we're finding that's working well. Obviously, we're applying PDCA, so the the training that we're doing, rolling out the initial training that you guys gave us, we're getting better and better at all the time for sure, and that's a real a real big takeaway for us. The the real breakthrough win that we're seeing now is when we're moving this 
methodology and way of working into other areas. What we're doing is we're getting the leaders who have already applied it in their area to come across to the other leaders and actively train the people who it's new to. So I find it um, I find it remarkable how much more attention a leader will pay to somebody who has directly experienced it in a similar role than they would by somebody who's not doing a similar role such as myself or one of the LEA guys coming in and actually directly speak to them about okay how how does this actually work or how does this actually look look like in reality and what benefit do I really get from it and obviously the the new leader can go and into the um, previous leaders area and say okay so I can actually really understand what this looks like and what this works and how it works well, in reality yeah. and I think that's a, that's a huge positive for us constantly sharing that learning well all, all sounds great obviously we, we can't cover you know so much today but could you just tell us a little bit more about what you're going to cover in your session learning session because not being biased and i shouldn't say this but i think it's going to be my favorite session yeah so uh, uh so if you can tell us a little bit more about it i'm, I'm a bit worried you like bruce forsyth and you say that to everybody pete but, but never <laughs> never mind <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll crack on with that. So yeah, so so what we're going to do, the way we're going to do it is we're going to share the posters that are at the the heart of our methodology. We're going to talk people through direct examples of how we train it. As I also mentioned, we'll show specific videos of um, direct testimony from uh, from leaders as to what they've learned and how they're taking this this forward. And we very much want to have a uh, inter interactive discussion with everybody participating in the conference and a, a big lesson for me is to minimize powerpoint as much as we possibly can we may have one slide maybe two at the most but there's not going to be much powerpoint at all in this session it's all going to be about engaging people helping people to understand you know what we've what we've done what it would look like for them where we've failed and learned and where we've also learned and want to make sure that we keep doing going forward so yeah very much looking forward to it oh, great okay well th thanks again i'm looking forward to the session as well so i think uh, what we're going to do is uh, open it up now to any other questions i've still got some questions i want to ask you as well but uh, i'll reserve them and see anybody else uh, uh, has got any questions for you so either open up your mics or join in or put type in the chat and we can uh, ask a, a question to gordon um, while they're doing that, Gordon, I've got a question. Yeah, from the learning process that we went through with your with your leaders uh, deploying that with the team members, what was the? How did the team members, you know, take to this with their own leaders sort of teaching and coaching them? So, I mean, with a with a large group of people, you get very varying levels of engagement for sure. But I think it's very clear the large majority are seeing a benefit. We've got quite a number of of um, team members who've got huge enthusiasm in this area, because they very much feel now they're be giving, being given permission to think proactively about how can I make what I do simpler, more straightforward, and therefore more reliable and consistent. So that that has really made a, a massive difference to quite a few of um, of the individuals in in our team in terms of their feeling of engagement and empowerment. And again, it sounds a bit like a broken record. We've got specific examples of this that we'll uh, that we'll share the conference where a team member or a couple of team members who have been given a a tool or a different lens to look at a process with are proactively coming up with ideas that then will make things easier for them and make the process work better. So we're we're seeing very good engagement across the board for sure. No, it's great, and it's great to see you know standardised work being used you know correctly for that to engage team members in you know the process and improving it and analysing it at a level of detail they might not have done before. Yeah, you know. absolutely, and the, and also the 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 dynamic of the leader behaving as a coach, but giving the ownership to the team members that and doing that better more consistently that's had a very profound effect on many of our uh, our people. Right. Okay. So I'll open it up for any other questions. If not, Dave and Dave, I'm sure they'll have some questions as well. But anyway, like I say, you can put it in the chat if you want or open your microphone up. No problem. 
If not Dave and Dave, Jordan, I would yeah, say, I, yeah, I've got a, I've got a question. I, 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 when we were doing those, developing those posters, I had exactly the same thought as you, that basically it was just too complicated. And yet, in in the in the same in the same breath. Um, Once I once I went through the process once of using the poster, I found it a lot easier to teach because you could see everything in terms of and everybody else could see everything. And then they could start making those those mental um, mental uh, uh, connections, really. Uh, my question to you is. We can't be the only ones that when they first look at it, think it's too complicated. So what should we be doing about that? I think, um, I, th I think for me, the, the key learning is understanding who the customer is. Right. So, I mean, in, in the ideal situation, I mean, if, so for example, uh, we've got colleagues um, coming over to look at what we're doing at Liverpool in the wider CSL organisation, because we're seen we're seen as being quite good in this area, which is which is great from our point of view. So what 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 I won't be doing is when I get somebody coming to the site, I won't be showing them a PowerPoint of the poster. I won't even be showing them a poster in the meeting room. What I'll be doing is I'll be taking them directly on the shop floor, getting them to speak to the team members, and then getting the team members to explain the poster to them, and then they'll understand that the value the customer has in the posters and i think i think that's the value and I, I think what i'd what i'd suggest dave would be when you're introducing the posters to people maybe share testimonials first before you share the poster so they can see okay well this this can work in the right environment again it, it, it is about situational situational awareness and situational adjustment it's been suggested to me by by a couple of people that when you first share the poster, it would make sense to cover part of it up and reveal it gradually as you go. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, that I don't think that works for me because I like to see the whole picture right from the start, which is one of the advantages of the poster. But again, I'm not remotely arrogant enough to think that a leader who knows their people a lot better than I do might think that that'd be more appropriate for the uh, the teaching style and the the groups that they're engaging with yeah. so there's certainly different tactics you could use yeah. for that I, I, th I think I the also, major emphasis is making sure that people understand the benefits of the customer yeah 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 that's a good point I think uh, as well it depends on the subject matter absolutely you know in some cases it's more useful to have the full picture and some of them are a little bit more linear in terms of uh, in terms of going through them i mean you know problem solving as a as an example it's quite a it's quite linear it's taught in quite a linear way isn't it really yeah i think so, that's a great example so i think if you it if you have a bit of thought about the order in which you take people through uh, i think the the earlier ones are slightly simpler so that's so by the time they're on ones that are potentially more complex and detailed, they're used to the way of working of going through a poster. So I think that could take some of the uh, the reticence away for sure. I think the good thing as well is it's not you know the posters you know the bottom half of the posters teach the method on something uh, uh, you know and the key points to 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 cover. But what makes it live is, is some of the leaders' own examples of that. Yeah, you know. So when people bring in their experience uh, to that. I think that's the key thing that makes it alive because it is a guide. Yeah, you know, we need to make that situational, you know, and bring people in and show them examples around that. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, which, like you said, Gordon, it's once you've used it once or twice, you get, you know, you get better at doing that. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's just a really interesting thing because. You know, back in the day, some of us are, re are old enough to remember when PowerPoint didn't exist. <laughs> no HP. Right? And we had overhead projectors. And, and I thought you were going to say stone tablets then. Well, we, did, we, had, we had stone <laughs> tablets before that. Yeah, yeah. Only a couple of years before that. But, but, the, but some of the best teachers 
um, I, I remember going on some quality um, training when I was at Rolls Royce, and and a guy didn't just have an OHP where he just put different ones on. He had one of those things where you wound it, and it and and the and he was able then to he actually told a story by drawing onto the OHP with a with a marker pen and then he'd finish that bit of story and then he'd wind it on and end up with a clean slate and off you off you went again and I think what what we what we end we had those types of things previously and then when everybody went to PowerPoint you kind of lose a lot of the interaction it's, a, it's very very similar to losing the interaction with the daily management with the boards if everything is all pristine and it's all created just by the computer there's then no or less of a human interface between between what you're looking at and what is what's happening and so you know i'm not saying you know not being a luddite uh, <laughs> and saying that we should have it all on tablets of stone but but there is definitely something um a bit a bit um it's a bit more humanistic isn't it to to have that interaction than than maybe just in in the in the technology so absolutely yeah. and I, I think i think technology is a secondary issue really i mean in the future we may be able to display the posters electronically yeah, you know, yeah. if we can get if we can get the technology that enables us to do that in a, a practical and economic way you know we don't want to be consuming power necessarily for sure but that may be an option yeah, yeah. very good Okay, right. Go on, Pete. Sorry. Go no, over to you, Dave. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thanks. Right. So, for those that are interested, um, uh, just just letting people know really where we stand with numbers. Uh, for those people that are interested in uh, the masterclasses, we've got four of those going on on Monday. Uh, three of those use the teach poster uh, concept that we've just been talking about. Um, the last session, uh, Darren sessions only run afternoon only. Uh, they're all highly interactive and we'll be discussing the topics in some detail. So, you know, bring along your questions. As you can see on the right hand side, uh, nobody wants to really go to mine. Uh, but um, but um, a couple of them are very close to being sold out. So, um, you know, for those people that are waiting and waiting and waiting, uh, don't wait too long because you might miss out. And then... Um, the other thing to say is that, of course, that was a taster. And if it's got you thinking that the summit would be useful, uh, then here's a bit more information. Uh, Monday 17th is those workshops, as we've just um, mentioned, uh, the pre-summit masterclasses, the half day sessions around Lean Transformation Framework, Problem Solving, Building a Lean Management System and Kaizen. Tuesday and Wednesday is the, is the, is the Lean Summit itself. Um, and that event is being held in Liverpool at um, a venue called The Spine. Um, unfor well, unfortunately for us, unfortunately for Toyota, but unfortunately for delegates, on Thursday we have a half-day visit to Deeside, uh, to their engine plant. Again, this is this is sold out. So um, it might well be that we can maybe do something to get a few more tickets, but but um, we can't take any bookings now on the on the uh, on on the website. Uh, but you can learn from uh, at the summit about what Toyota is doing around uh, Kaizen, um, and um, uh, you know, so 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 all is not lost. Not being able to attend that, and actually, we've been surprised by the amount of people that have booked on that. So we'll be chatting to the guys at TLMC to see what we can uh, what we can do. So if you if you do want to do something uh, with us on that, just just let us know anyway. And then the last piece is um, all of these, all the stuff that Gordon just mentioned is all available on our online learning platform. And we've got a huge range of materials that we're building up there, including free and paid courses, on-demand webinars and learning materials available uh, in the shop. So you can either purchase those on an individual basis or alternatively, the cheapest way really is to subscribe annually to the platform and that gains access to all the materials. Uh, there's over 20 different uh, different sets of learning materials on there now. Uh, we're adding more materials each month. Uh, being not-for-profit, we're using the revenue from the platform to make 
the stuff more accessible to everybody uh, so that you can learn yourself in much of the same way that Gordon's done. You know, le learn it and then work out how you're then going to uh, expand it across your own organisation for your own situation. Subscriptions, £119.99, including VAT per year. Uh, as an individual subscription, uh, but if you if you want to do an enterprise thing, just contact us, and um, uh, you, you, you'll you'll soon see that there are the more people you have on it, the the cheaper it gets, basically. Okay, so um, the next uh, webinar topic is um, an overview of the actual masterclasses. We're going to do that next. Thursday, three o'clock to three thirty. Uh, hope you found this of use. Um, any questions uh, about the presentation or any of the services just mentioned? Um, over to everybody still on the call. Thanks very much. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.